me telling you my agenda. My agenda is to get you to believe that God can do all things but all fail things in but your fail. life. Whether you know it or not, yeah. tell you, 
What about that alarm clock when it goes off? <laughs> what kind of words you use it then? I'll get up in five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, five more minutes come. You got this. <laughs> Eyes still closed. Yeah, but you yeah. got this. Right. And then you snooze again. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I think about uh, streets where um, you you go down the street and it's at least three underpasses. I find that in Florida a lot. You go to this underpass with a stoplight mm -hmm. and there's somebody there with a help me sign. Uh -huh. Okay, so you might miss that one. All right. You might miss that one. Okay, I'll go to the next one. I encourage that person. I'll get them about three, four dollars. Okay, so you do that at the second one. But by the time you come to the third mm. on the pass with the stoplight, with the help me sign, you, you, you find a ways to encourage yourself. Okay, Father, should I? I just gave four over here. Mm -hmm. Now I got this five, and I really see the Dunkin' Donuts on the right. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if I'm pulling in, but you encourage yourself to be a blessing to somebody That's else. Right. Yeah. All I'm saying is it's words. Encourage yourself. It's, it's the words we speak. It's how we talk into ourselves. I know that those are uh, practical situations, but that's how it is when you have to remember. And when it comes down to encouraging yourself, mm -hmm. we have to consult the Word of God. Amen. We do. And it reminds me of Psalms 37, 4 in the Amplified, mm -hmm. saying, Delight yourself in the, Lord, in the Lord, and He will give you the desires when? and the petitions of your heart. All right. right. See, that's why we're encouraging ourselves. When you mm -hmm. find the need to encourage yourself, there's a petition on the table. All right. There's a desire on the table. Mm -hmm. So you have to encourage yourself. Yeah. Have an expectation this level of worship wasn't just by song but it was from the heart this level of worship some of you have been expecting a breakthrough and because you broke through everything that was trying to fight against you from your mind and to thinking emotionally you disregarded everything that you once held to and you finally opened your heart to the Lord expect breakthrough have a great expectation this week hallelujah father is going to move in your life That specific last song in itself was a song that is specifically 
is a song that needs to be sung within the heart, not just out of your mouth. And this is specifically for an individual. This specific song that was sung has the lyrics to every single thing that they're going through. Proceed. It's a song, you know, the most high isn't limited through how he talk. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sometimes it's just a song because that's the level of communication that he can get to you at the time because you're not mature enough to hear his voice because you're right. trying to determine which is his voice, your voice, and other voices. All right. So in his wisdom and his guidance, he used songs and then he'll use the, the congregation and the presence to allow his presence to flow through. That last specific song was specifically for Hadaya. That song, every lyric in that song is something that you're going through. Something that you're going through, holding you close. I am not alone. Yeah. All of these specific words, it wasn't by coincidence that these songs were picked. We have to get out of that. The Most High is doing something for us in our season now to where he's being very intentional to speak to us. All right. That's why we don't no longer say general prayers anymore. All right. Now we ask for what we want. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because his ear is, a t is at attention. When the Most High tell you he's pleased with you, that's not just something that he just say. That's right. The Most High isn't into the games of flattery. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. He's not. The Most High isn't into the games of doing all these tricks and things to get you to believe. He says simply in his words, the world, the earth displays that he's alive. That's right. Just simply the birds and the sun and the moon doing what it does. That's right. It displays his that he's alive. Thank yeah. you. Amen. But sometimes that ain't enough for us. So because of his love, he goes beyond that. Thank you. And so hold on to that specific song, sis. Hold on to that song. And whenever you get into that place, play that song. That is your song. Amen. Let us be seated so we can continue to move ahead from the Lord. All right. Want to do something a little different now that his, his presence is here. We always got to, you know, we have a structure in how we do things. We wait to the end to, do, to share our testimonies. But the presence of the Lord is here and I want to be obedient to him. Instead of waiting towards the end where we talk about, you know, testimony and witness and all that other stuff. How about we do that now? How about we testify now? Since his presence is here, since we, we're rejoicing and, and all this other thing, we feel his presence here. How about we do that and testify of his goodness? We don't have to always go by a formality and structure. Structure is good. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes the most I interrupt those structures and say, I, I want you to put this out here in the atmosphere now. It's encouraging because of how he's been moving. Amen. Amen. He's been good. If you slip your hand up, you got a testimony. Go ahead, slip your hand up. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's get to it. Father's good, ain't it? Hallelujah. Because we got to talking about the Most High. Mm -hmm. So it's needed. So we as being servants of the Most High, let's also encourage our brother and sister, not mm -hmm. only in here, but out there, because we can sense that they need encouragement. They need a positive word, you know, from the Most High. And that's also confirmation to them. Like the, I, I've been talking to the Lord, and a stranger just comes to me. And we talk about the Lord, that gives them confirmation yeah. as well. So I just wanted to share that with you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, this is not just more than just a sign. It's more than just a scripture for this ministry. The foundation of this ministry was mm -hmm. built upon this passage of scripture. And so we do pull up for prayer. Pull up pull up for prayer is just training. Mm -hmm. It's, the picture is bigger than what we. That's right. Yeah. I want y'all to really understand really what the Most High is doing with this ministry. It's bigger than what we. If we're doing something, it's because it's a bigger thing. Yeah. He's going. He's going to start you in one place to stretch you for really where he's trying to take you. But you need training first. That's right. That's biblical. Look what he did to the disciples. He took them little bit by little bit. 
He walked with them. He went to their hometowns. Once he got them comfortable and ready and that they can believe. Yeah. Right. See, the training ground for y'all is just to believe. Right? Then he said, y'all go at two by two now. But he couldn't send them out two by two first. It's the wisdom of y'all. Hey, Amen. Come on, let's get going because I'm about to get in my message. Go ahead. Yes, Father. Father is good. It's a blessing and I'm just Excited for all the things he's doing in y'all life Amen. and the prayers that have been answered. And so I'm just excited for what he's going to continue to do as we continue to believe and trust in him on, on so many levels. So many. I'm talking about to the place to where we just walk in faith. That's it. That's it. You know, we're not even looking at the service. We're not trying to count the call. We're not trying to do none of that. We're just moving in faith. That's where you want to get us, right, ma'am? Amen. All right. This, to, to this, uh, I'm going to say it tonight. <laughs> this afternoon, we're going to get into the word. I'm not going to hold Amen. you long. We're going to get in and get out of here. Uh, I think that the testimonies in themselves and the worship has really uh, set the, in, the atmosphere and environment for this word. And today's message is... I want to talk to you from a passage or talk to you from a subject of if you believe it, you will see it. Right. If you believe it. If you, it's conditional. That's right. The conditions on believing. See, in the, in the practical world, we got to see it before we can believe it. Yeah, that's right. In the kingdom of God, belief Reign supreme. You got to believe it. Amen. All right. That was the slogan last year. Part of the, the blessings are coming. Mm -hmm. The most high sealed it through Elder Casey with the sealing of it. With You got to believe it. So the blessings are coming. That was at Passover. Mm -hmm. at, we starting to, uh, like Lady Emma mentioned, we starting to get a Passover album here of chance. Because right. <laughs> it seems like as though it. every year at Passover, the most high Give us a prophetic chant. We're, it ain't lyrics we make up. They just come from the heavens. Right? So the year before that one was let my people go. And we weren't talking about America. That's right. We was talking about religious constructs. We talking about all the things that keep us bound in our worship. All these things. That was it. And then the then last year, it was the blessings are coming. Healing's coming. Right? Yeshua is coming. Yes. Devil under our feet. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the song chant, right? And then it was sealed with in other case, you gotta believe it. Yes, and so now that we're in the place of belief before seeing it, oh y'all think the most high y'all ain't seen nothing yet. All right. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Deuteronomy 29, verse number 29. And I got a couple of passages before we get to where we're going. I promise I'm not going to hold y'all long because I want to I want to get out of here and I want y'all to get out of here and enjoy the rest of y'all day this beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Amen. The most high so he loves us so much. You see that day out there? Come on. <laughs> he loves us so much. I talked to more at Dakota. She told me it's still in the 30s. My Lord. I called. I talked to Jacksonville. Elder Eric died there teaching in Jacksonville at Boom Jacksonville. And yesterday they sitting on the back. Uh, Elder Fenton, them house that was built, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we know how the word came with that right. house that was built on the, lake on the lake with a closed in porch, and they just looking at the water. It's almost 80 degrees down now. Mm -hmm. I told him, I said, Y'all better get off this phone right now. <laughs> I've been gonna call Elder Casey, and we'll be down there tomorrow. <laughs> Elder Casey, you got the whole service. <laughs> Deuteronomy 29. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your presence and all that you're doing amongst your people, Father. And Father, we rejoice. We bar Baruch you. Yeah. Father, we, we, we Shabbat you, Father. And we thank you so much for all that you're doing. It's all about your glory, Father. Yeah. But we thank you for supplying our needs. And Father, we believe and trust that you will give us things that haven't even entered into our thoughts, right. Father, that you have for us, Father. And we receive it in Yeshua name. Deuteronomy 29 29 says, the secret things belong to the Elohim, That's what it says. our God. What? But uh -huh. the things that are revealed 
belongs to us. You, say that, y'all. Say it belongs to me. Belong to me. It belongs to me. The things that he revealed for you, the revelation for your life, the revelation for your children's lives, the revelation for your husband lives, your future husband lives, the revelation for your wife, your future wife, the revelation for your mother, your father, it belongs to you and them. Right. Amen? Amen? It says, but the things that are revealed belongs to us and to our children, not temporarily. Mm -mm. Look at what it says. What that word say? Yeah. Come on now, you got come on. I need y'all to see. Y'all got y'all Bible open? Never, ever, ever. Yeah. Got your Bible, it's right there. Yes, the most high word don't lie. He said, heaven and earth will pass away before my word. That's right. His word is true. Amen. He says, it's for us and our children. Forever. He says that we may do all the words of the law, right? So it's conditional based off the foreverness is based off how we live. That's right. That's right. If the forever ain't even based on how much you give. All right. Boy, y'all should have shouted there. Y'all, y'all sit up there. Look at the church. They told y'all the more you give, the more you're going to receive, right? That has some truth to it. But that ain't all the truth. Mm -hmm. The Most High wants your heart. He wants your obedience. He wants you to live righteous. Why? Because you are an image of him. Amen. And some of, that, some of those images is like what Elder Casey just testified. That image of him and the way he walked with the Most High, it liberated and shadowed that sister. And brought her to a place, even if her faith was doubting, because he decided to slip $20 in her pocket. It wasn't even about the amount of money. It was about the love and the selflessness of him giving that opened her heart and caused her to call on the name of the Lord. Should never be the same. Should never be the same. Amen. Follow me to Matthew chapter number 13. Now that we read that. See, you know, you got to believe it. You got to receive it. And there's always going to be some folks that going to say, yeah, right. <laughs> You always got them folk in the crowd. Don't worry about it. They're going to be a monster till you die. But you don't have to take on that mindset. That's right. Matthew chapter number 13, verse number 53. It says, And when Jesus or Yeshua had finished these parables, mm -hmm. he went away from there and come into his hometown. He taught them in their synagogue. So he had here in his hometown. You know what that means, right? So that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Mm -hmm. So he, he just didn't have teaching. He had demonstration. Mm -hmm. He taught. He wasn't just a talker. He shared wisdom. He poured into the people, but he also showed them that God was with him just because the words manifested through the way he walked and the way he lived. Sometimes your walk is the only thing people are going to see. All right. That's right. That's right. 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? They tried trying to size him up. Yeah. He can't be smart. Hmm. You know who his daddy is? His daddy ain't that smart. People going to size you up based off of your pedigree. Mm -hmm. you, you don't. Well, 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 tell us about your family. They're in the interview trying to size you up in the interview. Well, tell us about your family. Did your daddy go to school? Did your mama go to school? Did this, that, and the third? They'll size you up based off, because, based off your past or based off who you connected to. Yeah. Not knowing that who you connected to in your family lineage has nothing to do with how you thrive. All right. All right. Because just because your mother and your father didn't believe God like that, that don't mean you have to not believe God like right. that. That's right. You can believe that he can do all things but fail. And your own mother, your own father will question and doubt you how you believe. Mm -hmm. And says, there's nothing in our family us that says that you can believe that way. But you can stop it and break it. Look what it says. Is this not the carpenters? They were specific. His occupation does in, in that time dictates that he's not smart enough. He's a carpenter. 
He didn't go to the biggest schools. He didn't go to the big. He didn't hang out with the who's who. He wasn't related to Nicodemus. He wasn't related to the chief priest who got money or the Sanhedrin council. They're like, this is a carpenter's son. He don't have no value. What is he? What is he giving doing for society? Huh? He ain't even. He's not a tax collector, so he he doesn't have the, the level of arithmetic. Is this not the carpenter's son? Now, in one sentence. They say he got wisdom. Mm -hmm. In another sentence, they say he got signs and wonders. But on the other end, it don't add up. Because how can a man with wisdom and a demonstration mm -hmm. be a carpenter's son and do all of this? See, the problem is we're trying to make God be who we who he is based off our logic. Right. Some of us look at all this. Some of us are too intelligent for God. Mm. You can't do that. That's him. How you gonna do that? How you gonna sit up here? You gonna sit up here and tell me that you gonna dog gonna give me a, a husband or a wife and I've been single for 15 years? How you gonna sit up here and tell me that you're gonna pay that you're gonna bless me to pay a, a house off, but I lose my job? How you gonna bless me with a new car? Tell me all this other stuff. I hear you saying you keep saying this, but you ain't did nothing yet. I lose, I'm out of a car. My car done broke down, I've been on the bottom. What you saying to me don't add up, God. And some of us even feel as though since I've been trying to do the right thing, it seems as though I got more problems following you. When I was living wrong and living foul in the world, I had all the blessings I needed. Mm -hmm. Well, this kingdom thing is not based upon our logic, because if it was, then we would see it and believe. Right. God's kingdom is based off you believing and then you'll see it. Amen. What respond, what causes heaven to respond is your belief, not your seeing. So you don't have to have vision to be able to see. Ooh. Ray Charles didn't have vision. No, sir. But he could see. Yes, sir. Come on. See some of see better than some of folks that can't see. <laughs> Let's read the Bible. Is it not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother Mary called Mary? They don't went from his daddy to they trying to figure this out. This don't make sense. They getting on the phone calling. This don't make sense. Ain't no way in the world. How she a prophet, but she ain't prophesying. <laughs> Your logic don't make sense. How he a teacher? He ain't been to school. Yeah. Well, why is he going to school? That don't make sense. The logic don't make sense. But God have it that way because his word is true. I take the foolish things of the world uh -huh. to confound the wise. Yes. I'll take a prostitute in that day because mm -hmm. prostitutes ain't have no value. The, the God will take a prostitute and make her a great evangelist. Yeah. No. Don't make sense at all. Mm -hmm. God would choose some fishermen. Mm -hmm. Some fishermen. Didn't go to the Sanhedrin, didn't go to any other school, and they became the great witnesses. Mm -hmm. Why is that? God could have been born in a palace, but he chose a manger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. <laughs> Come on, come on. Come on now. It's wisdom. Look at what it says here. In verse number 55, it says, Is not his mother Mary? And that young girl running around now. She ain't old enough to work. That's his mother. And are not his brothers James? Joseph and Simon and Judas, not Iscariot, not the one who betrayed him. They don't went down the line. They trying to figure this thing out. That don't make no sense. Well, if they had been reading and studying and understood the ways of God, they would have really understood because it didn't make no sense for David to be king either. But they loved David so much and forgot how David was called. Yeah. So now you're trying to you're trying to you're trying to the son of David, you're trying to size him up, and he came in the same way. The logic don't make sense 
because God does not use logic. Now you're trying to say, God know all the sciences. He know all the math. That's he know all of this stuff. And we're trying to figure out. It ain't calculating. It ain't adding up. It's not supposed to add up. In the earth, three plus three is six, right? In heaven, three plus three ain't six. Because heaven is not dependent upon calculations. That's why it ain't no day and and nights. That's why it ain't no sun and moon. That's why it's no months. It's no calculus. No, it's eternal. In eternity, things function based when God say it. Not in time. So when God said in eternity, it's already happened. We waiting for it to get manifest in time. But here's the thing. You don't have to wait if you believe. That's right. Because when you believe, you think in eternal. You walk like you already got it. When you believe, you walk like you already got it. That's why I said, my mama, my mama, I'm telling you, my mama, my mama do some crazy stuff. She believed my brother was coming out of prison. And all the family, you better get a lawyer up. You better, that, how much that lawyer, it ain't, he, that lawyer too cheap. My mama said, I ain't depending on the lawyer. I just need him to represent me in front of man. I'm going to talk to the judge, the lawyer. The prosecutor. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to him. Thank you. But as you, what you talking about? I'm going. I'm gonna talk to him. I'm going right down to the prison, and she walked around that prison seven times like it was Jericho. My brother walked up out of there. Hallelujah. Walked up out of there. Walked up out of there. There's several other things, mama. No other than just touching cars and all that other stuff. My mama did some crazy stuff. But what I've learned over time, being crazy for God, it excited him. Because right. <laughs> now he said, I can I, you believe that. You, you believe me doing that? That's why it excited him to tell Peter to step out. Yeah. Peter said, tell me, bid me to step out on the water. Uh-huh. All the other brothers were like, man, he foolish. That's a ghost. That ain't it. They trying to logically figure out how he walk on the water. Peter said, I'm not trying to figure out how he walk on the water. I want to do what he doing. Mm-hmm. So he said, Peter, come on. And when Peter stepped out there, he got to walk. That's right. That's right. That's what God wants for you. He wants you. You believe me. You asking me for this. I want to see if you're going to walk in it. That's why the Bible said that Abraham walked before God. Yes. He wasn't waiting to see God walk. That's right. He wanted to wait. He got, hey, go ahead, Abraham. I'm going to follow. I'm, a, I'm going to watch you as you walk. Mm-hmm. So when Abraham is walking, with the level of faith he has, he's he's grown to a place where he's not trying to logically figure things out. When he was logically trying to figure out, that's when he was lying, trying to figure out all this other how I'm gonna do this, how I'm gonna do that. When it came time for him to put his son on the on the altar, he wasn't trying to logically figure out how this is gonna happen. He moved because he believed and trusted God. Amen. Do what it says here, verse number fifty-six. What it says? It says, "And are not his all his sisters with us?" Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. Mm-hmm. But Yeshua said to them, a prophet is not without honor except mm-hmm. in his hometown. I'm reading from the ESV. And in his own household. Yeah. And he did not do many mighty works there. Why? Look what the last line, last line says. Because of their unbelief. It wasn't in the his capacity. It's not in God's capacity to operate on doubt. It's not in your capacity for things to manifest because of doubt. It is built into you when you become born again and filled with the spirit. To believe even when others are doubting. All right. This is why as a believer it says that we do not revisit faith. We reside in faith. The just shall live by faith. So when everybody else around you is doubting, your faith level should increase. Come on. To say, God, here's an opportunity to convert some folks. That's right. I'm not trying to convert you to a religious ideology. I'm trying to convert you to believe that God can do it. Yes, sir. My intent yes. is here 
to preach the message to force you. I'm willfully telling you my agenda. My agenda is to get you to believe that God can do all things but all fail things in but your fail. life. Hallelujah. That's my agenda. That's the agenda. Hallelujah. Ain't no secret agendas around here. The agenda is, is to get you to believe. For without it, it's impossible to please God. That's right,